Salmon run? More like salmon one. Ooh, got him? <laughs> no, but seriously, would salmon run have worked in Splatoon 1? Salmon Run obviously wasn't a concept at the time of Splatoon 1, so it never would have been in the game. But, you know, why wouldn't you want some salmonlings in the lovely, crunchy Splatoon 1 graphics? Okay, assuming that we're not talking about the limitations of the Wii U here, I think there are ways that Splatoon 1 could have worked with Salmon Run, and ways that Splatoon 1 couldn't have worked with Salmon Run. So, just to get a good one out of the way, imagine more ways to get money or gear. I know that in Splatoon 1, there really wasn't a need for too much money because you would just kind of buy all the clothes that existed and then, oops, oops, no more need for money. I have all the clothes and all the weapons and there's no more coming to the game, yahoo. But imagine if Salmon Run was around. They probably could have gone for even more collaborative clothing ideas, which they did plenty of in Splatoon 1, like the Squid Girl gear, for example, which gave people more things to buy, it gave people more outfit options, and people like me <laughs> really liked the uh, Squid Girl outfit, you know? Back in the days of Splatoon 1, the only way that you got good sub combinations was going to Spike, giving him one of your snails or some of your hard-earned money, and going spin to win, baby! And, uh... That was terrifying, because you never knew if you were gonna get anything good, and then, oops, all money gone! <laughs> Seeing as Splatoon 1 had fixed mains, obviously you wouldn't have been able to get mains, but hey, maybe it would have led to more people being able to get their hands on triples without having to pull them off of other players. But let's get into gameplay. The way that Salmon Run works is all of the bosses in Salmon Run are based off of specials, so wouldn't it make sense that if it was in Splatoon 1, all the enemies would have to be based off of the <laughs> Splatoon 1 specials? Let's just go down the list of Splatoon 1 specials real quick and realize why a lot of them would be quite terrifying. Alright, so you've got Inkzuka, right? We all know Inkzuka. The thing flies at you from halfway across the map and oops, you're dead. Imagine that happening in Salmon Run. You walk over to pick up a random egg on the ground and before you can even like put it on your back, gone. Just destroyed. Just, you are no more. Maybe you got the egg, maybe you didn't, but now your friends have to go and get you. I feel like if a boss like this existed in Salmon Run, it would have to only fire, like, one Inkazooka at a time. Could you imagine if you had, like, three of those spawned across the map? Like, you thought three fly fish was bad? Imagine three random Inkazookas fired at you from three random directions. Just, just, just at random. It'd be terrifying. It would never work. I just, <laughs> there'd have to be like some kind of warning system. Like maybe the game warns you a second or two, like where it's coming from. Because the idea of us, of the Inkazooka just showing up at random would just not work. Now, a special that does have a warning system in place, which wouldn't be as terrifying, would probably be the Ink Strike. The Ink Strike tells you, albeit with like a couple of seconds in advance before you get destroyed, where it's gonna land. This one might be closer to the actual fly fish idea, where, you know, you say, hey, look, special is coming. You say, oh, hey, special is coming, and you get out of the way. Sounds okay, right? Well, imagine if the Ink Strike fell down on the basket. Yeah. Imagine if the ink strike was on the basket and you couldn't put eggs in for the last few seconds of a round. You and your whole team are sitting there, eggs in hand, knowing you could have won, but oops, someone was standing too close to the basket when the ink strike went off and now nobody can use it at all. <laughs> and then you lose. I don't know, maybe there'd be enough frames where you could like jump into it and put that last egg in, but it just sounds like a great way for things to fall apart real fast. All right, now, from the standard of the glow flies mode that we have in Splatoon 2, I could see Echolocator working. Imagine a singular boss monster that could choose one player and make everybody just run after that player for a while from the enemy side. That could work. Maybe you just kill the guy and then bada bing bada boom, the echo is over. It might be a bit terrifying, but that one might actually kind of work. I feel like you probably could only have one of those rushes going on at a time though, because if you have three different players <laughs> all being rushed simultaneously, what is the, does the fourth guy have to take care of the problem before everyone else just dies? If you die while getting caught, does the, like the glowfly movement automatically move to someone else? Terrifying. I'm not even gonna talk about Bubbler, let's be honest, that one, no. Imagine if the Salmons could just walk up to you without being hit, over. Done! 
Now, when it comes to killer whale, how big is the killer whale in this Salmon Run esque mode? Because if it's huge, like regular killer whale, imagine if half of your map was just taken out of the way because of the killer whale. Imagine not being able to cross the map at all for a chunk of seconds because a killer whale is in the way. I feel like this suffers from the same issue that the ink strike would have, where you would just be like, up, oh, well, I, I guess I can't play the game. <laughs> I feel like when you have a special like that, you have to make sure that whatever it does doesn't prevent you from being able to play the game. Like, even in the case of the missiles in Splatoon 2 Salmon Run, you still can move forward if you want to through the missiles. But the thing about Killer Whale is it destroys you frame one. So you would have no option of being able to get through that to place any eggs. If you were trapped on some edge, you would just have to accept it. And if there were multiple killer whales going off, how do you move? What do you, wait, what do you do? Do you lose? I think you lose. And of course, you can't forget about Kraken. Imagine a super invincible salmonling running up to you at top speeds and you could do nothing about it except wildly shoot at it and pray that it explodes? I'm assuming that something like that would have to have some amount of HP before it just explodes or something like that. Maybe similar to the Goldie that we have right now, but just faster and, <laughs> and more deadly and maybe it just has more knockback. But ah, ah, scary, terrifying. There, there couldn't be more than one of that, right? Imagine like you and a teammate just both screaming at each other over VC as you're being like chased around by like the equivalent of a Kraken. <laughs> Similarly, being able to use any of these specials in Salmon Run would be very interesting. Wouldn't it be fun for you to have those OP powers on your side? I think there's a reason that, you know, specials are a little more pulled back in Splatoon 2 as compared to Splatoon 1. Cause if you had all of this power, in Splatoon 2 Salmon Run, it would just it would just be so broken. It'd be so lopsided. Imagine if you could just pop Kraken and kill the entire rush that comes down at the beach in one fell swoop. I feel like that would be just a little too easy. Imagine being able to Inksuka a fly fish out of the sky. That would feel so good. <laughs> I mean, you could only really pull that off right now with a Grizz Coast Slosher. But hey, I wouldn't mind just having that power for just a moment. Imagine someone just hacking in Splatoon 1 specials into Splatoon 2 Salmon Run. I, I know it doesn't work like that because the only one we have in the game is Killer Whale, but just thinking about it for a moment makes me just laugh. It wouldn't actually be good, but it'd be funny. Oh, and one other little thing that I thought about was that you have to think about the map, right? In Splatoon 2, you open the map by pressing the X button, but in Splatoon 1, the map is right below you. Imagine if in a conceptual Splatoon 1 Salmon Run, you still were able to use the map. That would give you this huge advantage that you wouldn't really have in Splatoon 2 Salmon Run because you can't open the map. And I think it'd be funny, even if it would make things a lot simpler. Imagine you knew where all the bosses were coming from and you could just fire a singular Inkzuka and be like, that's that. <laughs> You and your team just go over there, collect a bunch of eggs, and you're already halfway to, like, winning the match. It'd be broken, but I, I wouldn't mind. Alright, that's all I've got. I do wonder, what kind of ink colors would they have used? Maybe they would have been like, Hey, we got this dark blue we got over here. Why don't we pair it with the dark orange? Close enough! It's fun to think about. And I think that Salmon Run in Splatoon 1 really would not have worked. A few people on stream really wanted me to talk about it though, so here we are. If this kind of rambly content suits your style, please subscribe for more. I've done this before, and I'll do it again. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day.